right, great, thank you. And thank you to the organizers for having me and for everyone for being here this early in the morning. So um, I'd like to talk a bit about the work we've been doing in the Cancer Variant Interpretation Group um, through the Clinical Genome Resource. And I have no financial disclosures or conflicts of interest. So just to orient some people to the Clinical Genome Resource, as I know this is largely a somatic group and may not be familiar with the efforts of ClinGen over the years. It started in uh, 2013, and um, so we are celebrating our 10th year this year. It's primarily funded by NHGRI, although we do have NCI funding. It's mainly three separate co-funded grants, and um, uh, through those institutions listed there on the slide, we have over 20 working groups, 85 expert panels, over 2,000 individuals now contribute uh, to ClinGen across 46 different countries. And you can see from the image here that our, our main work is to aggregate genomic and health data across the different entities listed there, then to do curation based on um, either gene curation, variant curation, dosage, or clinical actionability then to disseminate that out um, to the public, and all of that is to improve patient care through genomic medicine. So in 2018, ClinGen was uh, one of the first public human genetic variant databases um, through this recognition program of the FDA. And really what that did was help us create um, a lot of the SOPs and documentation that goes along with that recognition. So that really helped us to form some of the, the guidance, the SOPs that have then carried us through um, since that time. So currently, um, and again, this is largely on the germline side, we have 24 approved uh, variant curation expert panels, I'll call them VSEPs, and we have about 62, though, that are in the process and, and kind of along the stages of becoming variant curation expert panels. Um, and we have about 5,400 variants that are curated at this time, as well as for the 24 VSEPs, all the specifications. So those go out to the public and then can be used to, um, to do variant curation by other groups. So this is the ClinGen Sequence Variant Interpretation Working Group. Again, this is on the germline side. And just to explain kind of their role in this, they make recommendations about interpreting and handling the ACMG AMP evidence codes and they review and approve um, the draft, pilot, and final specifications of the expert panels as they're going through the process. So they've made a number of recommendations since the guidelines came out in 2015, and I think their first guidance came out probably in 2017, and then over the years they've made a number of other kind of modifications to it, and then now they're joining with ACMG to, to make a revision of the guidelines that will come out as a joint product between ClinGen and ACMG, um, hopefully sometime within the next year or so. So I want to also give just a quick overview of the germline expert panel process, and we are, do, we are replicating this on the somatic side as well. So again, you identify the leadership and address conflicts of interest. Step two is to then specify, again, this is on the germline side, uh, the ACMG AMP guidance. Um, and then the third stage is to validate those rules on known variants. And so this is what I'm, we're focusing on in the cancer variant interpretation working group. So in, in that case, in, for the germline side, there's about 30 to 40 variants that are piloted on the specifications. That goes to the SVI for approval, and then the final step is to define you know, long-term long plans for sustained curation. So again, this shows our documentation from the, um, this is for the ClinGen Variant Curation Expert Panel, SOP. And it talks about the types of variants to have, the number of variants, also using ClinVar as the gold standard for these, for the pilot variants, and to use the variant curation interface to curate, uh, and at least having at least five variants per gene. So what do we mean by ClinVar as a gold standard? We well, can see here, and this is um, for a variant in VHL, you have eight laboratories, so multiple laboratories, independent laboratories have submitted their interpretations. They've provided the criteria that they use to interpret that variant. They've all called it pathogenic, so there was no conflicts. And so we would use that on the germline side as our gold standard. So we would say any specifications that we make for interpreting um, a variant in the VHL gene based on you know, this guidance should also call that, that variant pathogenic. So that's how we use it as a gold standard. 
So to come back then to the cancer variant interpretation side, this is, um, this is the cancer variant uh, interpretation working group or committee. The chairs are Shashi Kant Kolkarni, Marilyn Lee, and I'm the coordinator. We have a group of about 20 individuals that um, are highly active on the calls, participating across different areas within um, cancer variant interpretation. To give an example here of, um, this is a slide from Jason Saliba from the Somatic Cancer Clinical um, Domain. This is where the cancer variant interpretation uh, committee sits within kind of the space of the domain. We interface with the domain. There's also these um, three separate areas within uh, the clinical domain, pediatric, hematologic cancers, and solid tumors. And as you can see here across the bottom, then we have different somatic cancer variant, ex, uh, variant curation expert panels in the process. So NTRAC is now at the step two phase. Um, histone, BCR ABLE, FLT3, and FGFR are at step one. They've been approved for step one and are working on their draft uh, specifications. And then we have two um, other groups that are in formation currently. So you can see this will be sort of scaling up maybe not in the same way as the germline side, but, but quite a few number of expert panels coming along that are going to have some, uh, need some guidance and um, some processes that are similar to the germline side. So what are the aims of the cancer variant interpretation uh, group? So we want to explore the generalizable elements of the AMPASCO CAP guidelines, create guidance and protocols for expert panels, um, tackle broad problems such as functional data, and then give input and approve cancer or gene-specific guidance of the SCV SEPs, and again, modeled after the ClinGen SVI. Um, you know, one of the roles that we have realized as we have gone through the process is, is our role in kind of coordinating across the different classification activities. And I like to call this oncogenicity civic tiers levels, oh my, because there are many different types of curation that are, that are applied to cancer variants. So we have the AMPASCO CAP tier classifications. On top of that, we have the FDA levels as well. Um, then we also have the oncogenicity classifications. And then we also have CIVIC, which is the platform in which we do the curation. And CIVIC has its own guidance for creating evidence items, as well as assertions that are oncogenic, diagnostic, predictive, and prognostic. And so kind of managing in between all of those has been a role of the um, CVI. So one of the first things we wanted to do was to create documentation for a ClinGen somatic cancer variant curation pilot. So the previous guidance that we had in our documentation was quite minimal, so it was just to have known diagnostic, prognostic, and predictive variants to use CIVIC to curate and to have at least five variants. So one of the topics that we discussed was finding a truth set for cancer variant classification. Again, the germline side, we have this lovely truth set from ClinVar. But on the somatic side, we don't have those same numbers. So I did this last week, just pulled the numbers with the origin of somatic from ClinVar and those that have multiple submitters. And the multiple independent submitters is really important because that's how we can see, we can kind of establish that gold standard. And so um, we only have about 912 somatic variants or somatic origin. And I would guess that some of those are also somatic tissue somatic, not somatic cancer somatic. So one way in which the, you know, this will differ from the germline side is that somatic cancer groups are going to have to create their own truth sets by looking across literature, by looking across different databases, and looking at the consistency of classifications across different databases as their, um, as their truth set. So we also tried to look if, and to see if we could do some of this empirically, like looking at the number of evidence items uh, in CIVIC that have been used to, uh, um, for assertions so far. So what are, what are curators using so far in this? And to try and uh, understand how many evidence items, and I would relate those to publications, how many publications are needed uh, in order to um, classify some of these variants. So that is still work that is ongoing as well. So we did ultimately come up with some pilot guidance here. And again, like I said, one of, the, one of the main roles was to kind of specify which types of curation will the SCV subs be doing. And so again, uh, in this guidance, we have said, if the SCV SEP includes missense, nonsense, frame shift, or small indels that would apply to the oncogenicity guidance, then you will do oncogenicity curation along with this clinical significance curation. 
But if the scope is on fusions, for instance, or other large complex variation, then the, in that case, we don't have guidance yet uh, for oncogenicity, uh, oncogenicity criteria. So they will have to define that separately as well as doing the clinical significance criteria. So we do require a classification reason. We do have 35 variants as minimum across the different oncogenic and AMPASCO cap assertion types. And we did align this as well with CIVIC, which is the platform in which we're doing the curation. And we did specify to use CIVIC um, for curation. So in the timeline, we worked on this for the second half of 2022. Um, we finalized it and submitted it to um, the Variant Curation Working Group. And that's the same group that then approves um, a lot of the um, guidance from the sequence variant interpretation group, the SVI group. It was approved February 15th, 2023, and then published uh, to the ClinGen website, as well as presented to the somatic uh, uh, clinical domain working group. So next up, we dived into establishing standards for predictive diagnostic and prognostic curations. So again, we'll be using some of the ClinGen gene curation for um, case control studies to develop similar curation protocols and standards for somatic curation. We are planning a webinar in fall 2023 for the oncogenicity SOP, and as well, many other activities um, uh, that we are hoping to get going. So with that, I'd like to acknowledge uh, our chairs and the members, the very active members of the CVI, uh, the funding as well through the NHGRI and NCI, our institutes. And um, if you'd like to be interested in contributing to the CVI or any topics of interest to work on, please feel free to come talk to me or um, send me an email. Thank you.